Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Weekend God's Life. If the wages of sin is death, do you know how stupid it is to confess your sins? Like, actually, do you want to die? Lord God, I confess unto you, a poor miserable sinner that I am, I did all the stuff you should kill me for. Really? See, Adam, Adam did the smart thing. He hid in the bushes. And when God found him, he blamed somebody else. Jonah, Jonah was told to go pastor some Ninevites and he was thoroughly against that plan. So when he disobeyed, he went and hid in the bottom of the boat and slept. My dog goes to the basement when she does something she knows is wrong. I'm just saying, confession doesn't come naturally to us. Running, running does. It's not that we ought to run from God, but it's that if there is nothing but the fear of punishment, why would we ever stand before God and say, I, a poor, miserable sinner, for the wages of sin is death. So how then are we ever going to pray? Old Adam is all about flying under the radar. So God has to call Adam and Eve out of the bushes and clothe them, even as he has promised a child that would be born of a woman and would crush the head of their enemy forever. He has to call Jonah out of the boat and, and preach through him a, a mercy that, that is almost hard to, to, to fathom. And he has that same mercy for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is life everlasting in Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, and so he would teach us to pray then, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We are taught to pray to a God who forgives sinners. Because if we didn't have a God who forgives sinners, we would never ever want to pray. In the large catechism, Luther writes, it is therefore the intent of this petition that God would not regard our sins or hold up to us what we daily deserve, but would deal graciously with us, forgive us as he has promised, and thus grant us a joyful and confident conscience to stand before him in prayer. For where the heart is not in right relation towards God, nor can take such confidence, it will never more venture to pray. But such a confident and joyful heart can spring from nothing else than the certain knowledge of the forgiveness of sins. See, this is about your conscience. This is what all of your prayers hinge upon, a clean conscience before God. See, we can be called out of the darkness to stand before God with courage, knowing that he has died for us to forgive us our sins, knowing that we can even ask him for other things as well, not in fear, not even sort of nervously bartering, like buying something on Craigslist in a shady part of town, but in confidence and hope that Christ has died and risen for us, in confidence and hope that God deals with us in love, that even as we pray every petition that would be set before us, we pray to a God who will not deal with us according to our sins, but according to his love and his mercy.